Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we'll be solving the number 11 from the Amy 1 of 2020. Now, this problem was actually requested to me by one of my viewers, and after looking over this problem and remembering my experiences on the test, I decided that this would be a pretty good problem to demonstrate how to solve. When I took the test, this problem gave me a lot of difficulty, and I spent a lot of time on this. But now, in retrospect, this problem isn't as hard as I made it out to be. Nonetheless, it's still a pretty hard problem. And that's why, today, I feel it's necessary to go over this astounding problem. Without further ado, let's just jump into the problem. For integers a, b, c, and d, let f of x equals x squared plus ax plus b and g of x equals x squared plus cx plus d. Find the number of ordered triplets a, b, and c of integers with absolute values not exceeding 10, for which there is an integer d such that g of f2 is equal to g of f4, which is further equal to zero. Now, as for the problem, compared to most other AIME problems, the context in this problem is pretty small. They give us two quadratics, and they tell us that these quadratics have integer coefficients, a, b, c, and d. Furthermore, it tells us that the ordered triplets of a, b, and c have absolute values, not exceeding 10. And they tell us there's an integer d such that g of f2 is equal to g of f4 is equal to zero. So as for the context, it's pretty minimum. And they're asking us to find out the number of ordered triplets for which this works. So let's take a look at this final statement, as I feel like this is the most important statement in the problem. g of f of 2 is equal to g of f of 4 which is equal to 0. And it already tells us g of x is a quadratic equation in the form of x squared plus cx plus d. So right from this statement we can deduce something very important. As we see that f of 2 and f of 4 when they're inserted into g of x we get a 0 out of that. This tells us that f of 2 or f of 4 or both could be roots of the function g of x because when you plug in the roots of a quadratic into the function itself you're going to get zero as an output now this could mean either two things for f of 2 and f of 4 this could mean first that the function g of x has one root and it's just some binomial squared so one repeated root and then that would mean f of 2 is equal to f of 4 or that f of 2 and f of 4 are two distinct roots in a quadratic g of x and if we solve for the number of outcomes for each of these cases and add these two up with each other we should get the number of ordered triplets a, b, and c of integers with absolute values of not exceeding 10 and solve the problem. So the first step is to go over each of these cases. So it seems logical to start with the first case where f of 2 is equal to f of 4 and there's only one repeat root to the quadratic x squared plus cx plus d. Well, in the case of f of 2 equaling f of 4, we can see that if that would mean that if we plugged in 2 into this quadratic equation as defined as f of x, that will be equal to if we plug in 4 
into this quadratic equation as defined of x. So if we plug in 2 into this quadratic, we're going to get 2 squared, which is 4, plus 2 times a, 2a, plus b is equal to 4 squared, plus 4a, plus b. By canceling out the b's on both sides, and subtracting 2a and 4 from the left and right sides, we're left with 0 equals to 12 plus 2a. Taking the 12 to the other side, we see that negative 12 is equal to 2a. And thus, a must be equal to negative 6. Now, even though we found a to be negative 6, we see that b does not force to be anything. b can be any number, and it works. So to find out all possible values of b, we just need to remember that in this problem, we're trying to make sure that any of a, b, or c are integers with absolute values not exceeding 10. If we know that b has to be an integer whose absolute value is less than or equal to 10, we find that b has to be all integer solutions greater than or equal to negative 10, but less than or equal to positive 10. Similarly, as we don't really see any constraints on b, by doing all this math, we don't see any constraints on C either. As we see that C just depends on whatever the values of f of 2 and f of 4 is. We don't really have a set value for f of 2 and f of 4. We see that f of 2 and f of 4 have to come up to be 4 plus 2a plus b, but seeing as that b could be pretty much anything as long as it's less than equal to 10 or greater than equal to 10. C's constraints are very loose and we see that C could pretty much work for anything too. Showing us that once again to find the solutions for C in this case we just need to remember that its absolute value has to be less than or equal to 10 giving us that c, once again, just like b, ranges from greater than equal to negative 10 to less than equal to positive 10. So, to find out all the ordered triplets a, b, and c with integers of absolute values not exceeding 10, we just need to find out the number of integers b could be less than or equal to 10, but greater than or equal to negative 10. Multiply that by the number of integers c could be less than or equal to 10 or greater than or equal to negative 10. And then multiply that by 1 because we've established that a has to equal to negative 1. So between negative 10 to positive 10 inclusive, there are 21 integers that b could be. Similarly, between negative 10 to positive 10, there are 21 integers that c could be. So altogether, for this first case, we get 21 times 21 times 1, which gives us 441 ordered triplets for when f of 2 is equal to f of 4, and they each represent one repeat root of the quadratic x squared plus cx plus d. So in this first case, we found that there are 441 ordered triplets. So now we can move on to the second case where f of 2 and f of 4 are distinct roots. Now, if f of 2 and f of 4 are the two distinct roots of the quadratic x squared plus cx plus d, we can exploit Vieta's formulas of some of the roots and express f of 2 and f of 4 as that. So, we see that in the second case, we could write f of 2 plus f of 4 being equal to negative c. And this is because 
the sum of the roots of any quadratic can be written as negative of the b coefficient divided by a. In this case, the b coefficient is c and the a coefficient is 1. So negative c over 1 would give us negative c. And f of 2 and f of the 4 are the roots, meaning that f of 2 plus f of 4 will equal to negative c. Now we have the values of f of 2 and f of 4 in terms of a and b. So we can write this out in terms of a and b. We know that f of 2 is equal to 2a plus b plus 4. And we know that f of 4 is equal to 4a plus b plus 16. And the sum of these two would equal to negative c. So now we just need to simplify this equation. 2a plus 4a will give us 6a and b plus b will give us 2b and 4 plus 16 will give us 20. So we get that the equation 6a plus 2b plus 20 is equal to negative c. This is where we get kind of stuck. But remember, c has to be in range of negative 10 to positive 10. Meaning that 6a plus 2b plus 20 also has to have an absolute value less than or equal to 10. This would give us the equation that 6a plus 2b plus 20 would be less than or equal to positive 10, but greater than or equal to negative 10. If we subtract 20 from both sides, or all three sides of this inequality, we see that negative 30 would be less than or equal to 6a plus 2b, which is less than or equal to minus 10. And dividing all three sides of this inequality by 2, we get negative 15 is less than or equal to 3a plus b, which is less than or equal to negative 5. Once we solve this inequality for all values of a and b that work out, we multiply that by 1, because remember, c is forced by whatever a and b are. So as soon as we find out the number of values of a and b that work for this inequality, we can add that to our other case, and we get the answer to this problem. Now, this is where the computations get slightly bashy. And I mean, this is an AIME test, and you're given three hours. So it's okay if some of the problems are bashy. But at this point, you just have to try out all the cases of A and B, and you have to count out how many of them work. Now, you could do this case by case, but that'll be kind of tedious and long. But the preferred method would be by graphing. If we set a as x and b as y and then graph out the equations that would be formed when we put 3x plus y is less than or equal to negative 5 and the line formed by 3a plus b is greater than equal to negative 15. If we make sure that x and y are in a range, we can easily see that the number of solutions for a and b is the number of lattice points in that grid. So that could be one way of going about solving this. Nonetheless, at this point it's pretty much bash, and I don't really feel like going through a lot of different cases. As once you do all these calculations, you'll get 69 different solutions for ordered pair A and B. And while you're doing these calculations for all the ordered pairs for A and B, be wary of the case where A is negative 6. Because if you look back to our earlier case, where f2 is equal to f4, if a is negative 6, then we're going to have this duplicate root case. So when you compute for all the ordered pairs a and b that satisfy this computation, be sure to leave out the case where a is equal to negative 6. So once you do all these calculations, it gets 69 as your result. We just need to add that to 441. And by doing so, we get 510 as our end answer. So as you can see, 
We've just solved AI me number 11. This problem was not easy by any means, but it wasn't as hard as it looked to be. I remember when I first saw this problem, the sheer sight of two quadratics and ordered triplets and functions like this, that made me feel nauseous. However, if you could just organize your thoughts and come up with the idea that these two are either independent roots or the same roots, much of this casework will follow after. In this equation, we did not use much advanced thoughts. We used pretty much middle school algebra and a couple of cute, cool tricks to solve this AIME number 11. So the takeaway for this problem is don't fear the problem at first glance. This was another scary looking problem. But if you manage to collect your thoughts and think clearly and take account for all the cases, then you too can solve this difficult and challenging problem.